Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of this Starlight Tube Radio Repair that we've been working on. This thing's from 1964. Uh, it's a model number FMW200. So we, last time in part one, we opened this thing up, we looked inside and found out that the thing did not work. And so what we did is we found what that problem was. We also replaced the filter capacitors that were in here and we got this thing to play. So the next step in this part is we're going to do the alignment of this radio. We're going to do the AM with the ICO VTVM that you saw our video on just recently. And then we're going to do the FM alignment with the Syncor SG-165 and uh, my BK Precision Oscilloscope. And we'll see how that works out. Um, at the end of this, hang on and look to the end because apparently a new problem crops up. So we'll see what that looks like. So let's see what happens. In the meantime, we'll get on to this. So the other videos that are in this uh, series of videos for this radio, there'll be a playlist down in the notes below of the link to the play playlist for this. It'll have the videos as they're released for this. I'll also see if I can get a card to work to pop up here. We'll see if that works. But meanwhile, let's get on to part two. Okay, so we've had this on for several hours and it's working just fine. And uh, so it's time to start the alignment process. We've got the alignment instructions right here. So we're going to start with the AM side. Uh, I've got the uh, vacuum tube voltmeter here. It's been warming up for a bit. Doesn't really matter. It's, I'm not really using the numbers, but I've been watching the sweep on the on the dial. And we're going to be aligning the. Uh, well, we're going to start with doing the uh, intermediate frequency transformers. Now the ones for the AM are actually underneath these kind of cool uh, little black boxes that are kind of set on here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me turn, let me turn this around without destroying something. And zoom you in. I haven't seen this before. This is kind of neat. So the, uh, the antenna is held with this black bracket that's on here. Almost looks like it's 3D printed. And it's slipped down on top of the IF cans for the AM side of the circuit. That's kind of cool. Uh, accusations. His uncle. Okay, so what I've got is I've got the, the two outputs. They go to the speaker from the output transformer. This yellow lead is one of them. Goes to the speaker. This first green one goes to the probe for the VTVM which is set on AC ohms and I've also got a lead going from there to the other speaker so I can hear the speaker her husband that's their their widow okay but I'm reading a voltage here but what I can do is I can disconnect this lead right here to take the speaker out and then I'll be able to see the vacuum tube voltmeter without having the load of the speaker on there as well Meanwhile, the negative lead for this also goes up and is clipped up here where the yellow is. So that's completing the circuit for the vacuum tube volt here. All right, so what we're going to do is, as we follow the instructions here, we're going to go to the gang fully open. So we're going to open the tuning condenser up all the way. Okay, it's up all the way right there. Alright, so then what we're going to do is we're going to put the frequency counter on. You've seen this before. Uh, let me see if I can put the counter where you can see it at least. Okay, set that for 455 kilocycles. I'm adjusting the frequency counter, which is a frequency generator, which is located on top of this HP. Right, you remember it. Right up here. So I'm adjusting that to get to 455 here. There we go. 455 kilohertz. And I'll be turning on the modulation with flipping the switch and then adjusting the level of it with that knob. Okay, let's go back and look at this. Okay, let's get this tuned back to 455. 
Okay, 455. The output of this I've got going into a coil. And it should be picked up here pretty easily. All right, so I'm going to turn on the modulation. I've got the speaker connected, so I should be able to hear it. Let me turn up the speaker some. And turn on the modulation. Okay, now what I'm going to do is disconnect this speaker. We saw a jump up here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tweak the IF cans and try to get a better peaking on that. Okay, I'm going to work from the detector on back. So I'm going to be on here going... Can you see this? I'm going to go... A1, A2, A3, A4. These are the IF cans for the AM circuit. These are the ones for the FM up here. I'm doing the AM currently. So I'm going to start with A1, then A2, then A3, then A4. Now A1 is located on the top side on the can nearest the capacitor. The capacitor is down here at the bottom. So I'm going to be going into that location first. All right, let's see if these things will even budge. I'm not sure which one had the paint on it. I think it's the second one. Yeah, it is. Let me see if I can get in there and get on it. You go loosen first. I'm going to turn up the signal. Okay. And I'll turn up the volume just a little bit. Okay. Now let's try adjusting the can some more. Okay, let me try the bottom of that one. All right. Okay, that seems to be at the peak. There's dropping off. Okay, we'll go to A3. All right, let's see what we get. Yeah, it looks like it was pretty close where it needed to be. Okay, check the bottom one. I had to clear the paint out of the slot. Hey, actually doing better. Hey, it's exciting. Oh wow, fantastic. Because before it was reading like, man, this thing's fine, leave it alone. Looks like I'm in isolation here a little bit. Okay, really going down. Going up. All right, let me go back and start where I was earlier. Okay, that's about as good as I think it's going to stay.
around there and then do the other side. Okay, that's good. I'll go back to this one. Okay, there's the peak. All right, so we got the first set done. Now what we're going to do is uh, put the frequency generator at 1620, leaving the gang fully open. All right, so let's go 1620 on the frequency generator. So we're going to go here, switch scales, 1620. Once again, I'm adjusting the frequency generator up here. All right, 1620, please. 1620, okay. Oscillator back on, the uh, modulator back on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust A5 for maximum. So that should be the oscillator coil. And A5 is the tuning, the tuning condenser trimmer closest to the capacitor. So you're not going to be able to see that where you are. I'm not sure I can get in there. Let's just see what we get. I think I might want to listen. Let me listen to this. Let's see here. Sounds pretty good. You turn the strength down. Volume down. Okay, now I'm just going to go for maximum signal. right there is good. All right, next step is to set the frequency counter to 14 uh, generator to 1400. Fourteen hundred. Then tune it to the signal, and then adjust the antenna to that signal. But what I find works better is to actually find a weak station in this area, and then trim the antenna to that. So let me see if we can find a station out here somewhere. I'm, uh, I'm over here tuning the tuning condenser. I want a really weak station. Area 1400. Okay, that's the area of 1400. Let me find a quite weak station in this area. I want it to be weak, but strong enough to get a good enough read on it. Let's try 
try that one. Yeah, I'd rather not have music, but I guess I have to risk it. If later you find this bit skipped, it's because of a copyright issue. Okay, let me get in there to the antenna. Okay, that's peaked the antenna. All right, then what we do is we go down to 600 kilocycles. All right. Let's see. So now we're looking for 600 kilocycles here. Because we're going to set the bottom of the two, of the band, but you know I I'm probably not going to adjust it because I can see the pot in there and they've got some kind of silicon silicone gel all over it or something. And if that's the case, I'm not going to try to force it. I'll see if it'll budge, but if not, I'm not going to mess with it. That screw ain't budging. I'm not going to risk breaking it. I think that's fine. So that completes the AM alignment. Let me just see how, here, how it sounds. Right, it's already a problem. There goes the perfect show. It's the hump show. Two days in, and it's already been that. And Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social. Okay, that all sounds good. All right, I'm going to go to the FM alignment now. Uh, I'm going to have to switch a bunch of equipment here. I'm going to bring out the SG-165, and uh, I got to disconnect a, a capacitor. It's going to take me a while to get this set up, so I'll bring you back when I've got all that set up and ready to go. Okay, I have the SG-165 set up in 10.7 uh, sweep mode. Uh, going in through uh, the matching pad, I got an aftermarket one because the other ones are just kind of old. And uh, it's going into the grid of the FM converter tube. Ground is to the chassis. And then the detector is hooked up here. I've disconnected the uh, stabilizing capacitor and grounded it here. I'm on the other side of the detector diode and I'm feeding that into the oscilloscope. So what's happening is this is producing the sweep signal. It comes out of the all outputs, goes into the matching pad, goes into the mixer. The detector probe picks that up and then brings it into the from detector port on the SG-165. It then puts a post marker on it and then sends that signal to the oscilloscope that can go into uh, input 1 or input A, channel 1, uh, into the oscilloscope. So what we have is we have a sweep signal going through uh, the FM section. So let me see if I can zoom in and we can see what we have there. Okay, I'm going to reduce the lights in here so we can see. Is that enough? Okay, so you can see, I'm going to move, let me go ahead and kill the other lights. Alright, so what I'm going to do is disconnect the from detector. So there's the markers. Okay, if I move them up on the screen, there's the markers. So I've got it positioned in the center uh, of the sweep. So that's between these two marks. And then you can move the rocker on the SG-165 to center that in the middle of that part. So I've got that marked. I can change the height of the markers like so. OK. 
Okay. The one in the middle, that's real bright right then, is 10.7. The one to the left is 10.6. The one to the right is 10.8. Okay, now what I'm going to do is plug in the from detector back in. So I can change by changing the uh, output, the SG-165, the intensity of what's coming out of that probe. Let's turn it up. I've got it set on the times 100. So it's around 850 is about where it's got set right here, millivolts. I'm sure that's not calibrated, but it's what it is on what the dial reads. Okay, so am I really getting what I expected to see? Well, no, not really. I mean, uh, I would like to have seen more of a hump there and less of a sharp spike. But this is showing the, the way the SG-165 is sweeping and we're getting the sweep signal through. Okay. Now I can mess with the uh, IF transformers to see if I can get more of a hump uh, from that location. And then also, I won't show it right now, but if I hooked it up, I need to rehook up the stabilizing capacitor and then I can hook up to uh, another location further downstream and then see if I get the butterfly curve uh, out of the detector. But I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and proceed with trying to do some of these adjustments. I'm going to bring the lights back on so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'll back you up. That is the wrong way. And bring it over here. Now maybe you can see a little bit of that here. Okay. So the first step I have that I can adjust is A8. A8. Let's see. Is here. It's got paint over it again. So this is the primary of the discriminator coil. And we'll see if I move this what kind of changes we get there. It is moving. It's losing intensity. So that's changing the peak of that. So we'll leave it like that. Let's go to um, A9, which is up here. Try adjusting A9. I'm moving it. It's kind of going for a peak there, I guess. Now I go to A10. A10 is here. A peak, but I'm not getting a hump. All right, so that's 10. Let's go to 11. moving the peak left or right but it's not changing the shape of the peak right. I know it's hard for you guys to see because of the way the light is you see the trace coming through it right now that really high peak there okay we'll go to the last one should say 12 down here. Okay. 
Yes, this is very fiddly. Okay. And that's decreasing the amplitude as well. So now what I've done is used a jumper to basically reconnect the stabilizing capacitor across the um, the two diodes that are in the back end of the detector of the uh, discriminator to connect those back, and then I moved the um, the detector die, uh, pad or connector over to position B in the schematic, so that I can start to see what the output of the of the um, discriminator is, and I think we got a pretty good look at it over here. So here you can see the output of the discriminator like we're supposed to. Uh, changed the size of scale. It had been about like this or so, and I also had the marker turned up too high. So I was getting this initially. So I turned the marker down, brought the scale up, and so what you're seeing is, is that it's crossing it's crossing right in the middle between the two widths of the of the trace between here and here zero zero cross is right in the middle and the amplitude on either side of it is basically the same and it's symmetrical I could probably do a little bit better down here I want to reduce the size of the markers further and I can also change the output of the signal It could be maybe just a little bit more on the low side Let's see if I can get this centered. Yeah, it's quite a bit higher on one side than the other, so I could probably adjust the discriminator some a little bit. Okay, uh, but that shows how the SG165 gives us the output of the discriminator. And once again, once I get in there and start adjusting this, it'll take some time. Okay, after much cajoling. A lot of work and patience. Got what I think is a pretty decent trace here. That's giving the shape that we're supposed to see. Turn down the intensity here. Let's see. So I'm going to turn up the markers. You can see the main one in the middle is right on the center hash mark and I've got one to the left and one to the right that are right on the shoulders of the hump. And that's what we want to see. It's fairly symmetrical around the center and the hump is more or less flat, flat on the top and the two markers show the width of the, uh, of, the, of the plateau. So let me show you in one of the manuals. Here is Here's what it shows in the SAMs for what we're trying to see there. But if we look in the manual of the SG165, you'll see where it wants to see the other the other markers, birdies they call it. So I'll bring that up here. As you can see, it wants to see it like that where the birdies are right in the corners of the plateau with the 10.7 square in the middle. And that's pretty much what we have. I can black that out for you again. Turn it up and you see the side markers are right there on the tips where it's making the turn. There we go. So that's the uh, that's the IF alignment for the FM with the SG165. So now we went back and uh, clipped back in the stabilizing capacitor, moved the lead over to point B on the schematic, and then if we look over at the output from the discriminator, it's supposed to be the S-shaped curve. And you can see we've got that. Turn down the markers. So you can see I have the center marker right at the zero cross. And then the other markers are right at the tips of the peak, the minimum and the maximum. 
and it's symmetrical. Now I can try to go in there and make some adjustments to see how it changes it. But I think that's pretty much where we want to see. But let's see if we can do any better. So here we go. Let me turn this off. Now I'm working in the dark. <laughs> Great. Alright, so let's see. I can adjust the discriminator in the dark. I just need to get the tweaker to fall into the little slot. Okay, a minute. Okay, I'm going to start to adjust a little bit. Okay. So that was throwing out symmetry if in terms of maximum and minimum. So that's too far. And that's too far the other way. And that looks about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. Okay, post alignment. Let's try it out. This is the AM band. That's 540. I normally don't pick that up out here at all. Politically, you, you can't do that you, you could, because you're saying. He knows Americans want it. Why would you not do it? Get the dynamite. Let's go to FM. I'm getting some hum, and uh, you know I didn't change all the electrolytics out. And there's one in particular that goes around the uh, the main rectifier diode. Maybe that one's leaking a little bit, but primarily we're trying to get this thing working. I also wanted to verify that you know that the way the alignment worked was working okay, and then I can go back and look at this later if I want to go back and address that little bit of hum that I have there.
All right, so I'm getting uh, plenty of stations, again, plenty of sensitivity. Um, I find that after I did the, the IF and discriminator on the FM, I think I'm getting better reception. Uh, I think I'm getting less distortion than I was getting earlier. Uh, maybe it was like it was because I had that really speak, uh, sp I'm try to say, steep spike. I may have been overdriving some things. I think I need to have a lot more balanced sound now. It sounds, it sounds very, very good to me. All right, so uh, I can put this back in the case and call this one done. Uh, I may leave it out for a couple of days and just mess with it, let it burn, you know, burn in the rest of the way. And I may decide to see if I can track down where that hum might be coming from. It's, it's only a little bit annoying. It's not much. But it's late tonight. I'm going to call it quits now. And uh, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Okay, let's see how it does. Turn it on. AM mode. Let's wait for the tubes to start to conduct. It's got uh, civil defense markings on here as well. I say this is from 64, according to the schematic. So, tubes warming up yet? Well... Wow.